Technology. It's one of the main problems parents face with their kids. How much is too much? What's appropriate for their age? What about all the research that says how bad it all is? And that's really the tip of the iceberg, right? Because then you step into the unschooling world and you hear things like no screen limits and it can make your head spin. Setting limits seems to be an appropriate thing for parents to do with their kids. But unschooling families aren't moving in that direction at all. How can that be good? Phew, it's a lot of questions. And I can already feel everyone's anxiety rising as I write this all out. Let's talk about it today, calmly, rationally. Let's step out of the power struggle and into a place where we can connect with our kids. I'm Sue Patterson, and this is the Unschooling Mom to Mom podcast. I pop in here each week to give you a little encouragement. When I say a little, I mean it. I try to keep these podcasts in the five to 10 minute range. So that's the goal, at least, because I know you're busy. And looking at parenting and education from this different perspective takes some effort. It's a lot to process, but that's how you get there. Little steps, mulling over these ideas. So I'm sending you some reassurance from someone who's been there. My kids are all grown and I want to talk to you about what I've seen work and not work when it comes to unschooling. And sometimes when we're choosing something this unconventional, we need a community around us to help us see all of our options, to help us continue to peel back layers that are either habits or ideas that keep us stuck in the status quo. You really can be the parent you want to be, even if you're not 100% sure what that even means. It's going to change over time. Kids grow and need you in different ways, and you will grow too right alongside them, learning how to parent them in the best way possible. But technology, let's go there. I have a lot of topics about technology that we could um, explore and I do that in the unschooling guide about technology. It has 25 pages filled with resources for you. And then also at least once a week, topics about kids and their technology shows up in my coaching group too. I help parents work through their fears and get back onto steadier ground. You can always join us there. Both of these are easy to find at suepatterson.com slash technology for um, the guide and suepatterson.com slash membership for the coaching group. So one of the most common topics parents worry about centers around limiting their kids' time on their devices. We've read the articles or we've heard other people go on and on about the articles they've read about kids who are supposedly addicted to their games or totally zoned out, not involved in family activities or resist getting off the computer even after they've been on for what we consider long enough. And maybe as I'm listing those behaviors, you're thinking, yeah, my kid acts like that too. So let's do a little excavating here. Truth be told, some people are gonna bail <laughs> right here on the podcast. They don't want to look at changing anything they are doing. They just want me to tell them how to make their kids change. And sure, we can coerce and threaten, but that always backfires. And if it doesn't backfire, it's because we've made the child so fearful of the parent's reaction or their powerfulness, which sets an entire trajectory of lying and sneaking and distance between the child and the parent. And that's the opposite of what we're trying to do as unschoolers. We're looking for more connection, for building trust, for partnering with our kids. So if you had the reaction of, yes, my kid is obsessed with technology, I want you to know about something called confirmation bias. It's not intentional. We do it when we hold a belief and we only look for examples that support that idea. If we see something inconsistent with the belief, we disregard it. So I want you to do something that will counter this. Deliberately and consciously, look for examples where your child is doing other things, where they switch gears easily, where they connect with you and the family. Let's give them some credit for those things too. Let's 
not let our fears and our worries brush these aside. So all you see are examples of what concerns you. So another thing has to do with the language that we use. Those with true addictions in their families know that what most kids are doing, even if they are playing for many hours, it's not true addiction. I think I may do another podcast entirely on the language we use regarding behavior that frightens us. But the topic around technology that I want us to tackle this time man, it took me a long time to get to this part, Um, is about all the feelings and meanings surrounded by the words screen limits. Mainstream parents confidently boast, my kids play games, but we have clear screen limits. The message is, I'm a good parent because I run a tight ship, or these kids know I'm boss, or these kids can't be trusted to trust themselves. And as John Holt said a long time ago, we don't trust kids because long ago we weren't trusted either. Couldn't be trusted. Another whole podcast on that too, right? But to counter that, unschooling parents say, my kid has no screen limits. And then everyone recoils aghast. Sometimes it has to do with sound bites. They don't really describe things well, though. They may even jar you, but the point is to get your attention and to think about what you're doing consciously, to be intentional. So as we've said all along in these podcasts, though, fear is happy to jump in if we hesitate. Fear wants to maintain the conformity and keep us safe. But let's move fear from the driver's seat and say, It's safe for us to look at this. Calm down, fear. So I'm going to give you a few ideas to ponder. And hopefully it will bring some clarity or at least help you see that it doesn't have to be that you're the total control freak parent or you're the total sure anything and everything is cool parent. (laughs) There's some in between. So number one, with the terminology, no screen limits. What is usually meant is no arbitrary time limits on their devices, no two hour limit or some predetermined, this is our house rule scenario. Number two, referring to all technology as a screen really implies a lack of knowledge and it's an attempt to be negative about the tool, be it a phone or a tablet or a laptop or a desktop. It's almost always a dog whistle to say, I'm on top of this problem that we all know about, and I'm not one of those parents. So we're looking for a kind of parenting peer group approval. So that's something to unpack. Number three, we, it's really common for society to resist progress. History has shown us that they resisted books when they first became available to the masses. They thought it would prevent people from ever having conversations again. Rock and roll was going to be the downfall of the world, remember? We like a comfy, non-changing world. We certainly don't want our kids wandering off into some unfamiliar territory. But that's the plight of parents in every generation, really. I want you to remember on number four that these various forms of technology are simply tools to bring information into our, into our worlds, just like books did. Now it's bigger, more reach, more information, and something different from books is that these technological tools perform so many different things. They help us research on the internet. They help us strategize in games. They help us stay connected with friends. I have a whole PDF of academic skills as well as soft skills that grow because of tech use. I'll link to it. But the point is to not sweep with that broad brush, even to take the book analogy a little bit further. If we were growing up and our parents said, get your nose out of that book, go do something else. Would they have stopped you if you went to the kitchen to cook something using a recipe book? Would they say, sorry, you've already been on books long enough. Stop it. No. So number five, when we put limits on anything, really, we make it more desirable. It's the theory of the forbidden fruit. 
when we lean in to learn more about what they're doing, it helps us trust them a little bit more. When we have had limits, we can expect them to want to hold on to it a little bit more tightly. They're afraid we're going to change our minds. So they want to play while they can or whatever it was that they feel they were deprived of. Only when we're stepping away from controlling it, they can get the opportunity to actually see, we get the opportunity to actually see whether they've had enough or that they might want to do something else. And they get that opportunity too. Their internal motivation needs to be allowed to grow and strengthen. And this leads me to number six, the last thing from my list about screen limits. If you're listening, your kid probably enjoys technology. For unschooling to really work, we have to embrace their interests and curiosities. We certainly don't want to be the villain in this scenario, the one keeping them from their beloved games or phone or whatever. Don't set it up as an either or scenario. Think of it more as a buffet and they simply are enjoying one end of the buffet more than the other. Enjoy their enjoyment. That will go a long way toward building the trust that needs to be cultivated so that unschooling can really work. So it's probably enough for now. Even though I know you'll have some more, yeah, but what about when questions? <laughs> Leave them in the comments and that will help me know what topics to bump up for the next time. And if you want to dive into that unschooling guide about technology, it's really great and it's available. If you need more support from me or from an entire community of unschooling parents, reach out to join the coaching group or hop on a call with me. You don't have to do this alone. And so that's it for now. I'll be back to talk with you again next week. You can do this. You can be the parent you want to be. So take care and happy unschooling. <laughs>